it was an early start this morning. Uh, I never sleep well the night before a, a day's tench fishing. I've come down to a still water on the edge of Cambridge here, uh, not far from me. It doesn't hold massive fish, but at this time of year, it's an excellent venue to get a few runs, play about the few rigs. Certainly can get a few fish on the bank. I've had days where I've had 20, 30 fish in, in just a short two or three hour session. And um, yeah, it's a fantastic venue. If you can find these near you, these are the sort of venues on the edge of towns that you want to explore because there's fish in them. There's nothing better than watching the sun come up on a early May day. It's a fantastic way to start the day. You can often see the tench, they'll show themselves and that can be a great clue as to where to present your baits. Uh, them first few 15, 20 minutes of dawn can give you so much information. When I arrived this morning at first light, I did see several fish rolling out in the mist. Um, so I put a, a, just a bare lead out towards them and located a um, silty gully, about 13 wraps. Um, as I said before, it's always best to get down here early and little clues like this will definitely help you have a good day's fishing. I've had a further plumb around with the bare lead and the rest of the lake is fairly barren. There's not many features, so tiny little clues like that where you can find something, a patrol route, anywhere that might hold natural food. These are the places you want to be aiming. There's very little weed out on this fishery at the moment. It's still early season. So, you know, the clues are there. They might be small, they might be subtle, but they are the clues that you've got to be looking for if you want to get a few fish on the bank. The next thing to do was put out a bit of bait. I started off with about 15 spoms of particles, hemp seeds, small pellets, and a carpet type ground bait. What I'm aiming to do is spread it out liberally in a quite a large area. I want numbers of fish to turn up. I'm not just fishing for individual fish. There's a lot of tension here. I want them competing for the feed and gathering confidence fingers crossed they're going to move in and we're going to get a few fish. So the method I'm using today is the method feeder, a flat bomb feeder. Uh, if you're unsure of the bottom it's a fantastic way of presenting a bait. They're great for casting, I'm fishing about 13 wraps out today. Tench seem to really home in on a small ball of ground bait. The ground bait mix I'm using today is a nice sticky sweet mix that I've used in the past. It's ideal for moulding into the flat method. It can be cast easily, it stays on there and breaks down nice and quickly once it hits the bottom. The tench really do seem to like it. It has got bolt rig properties, so there's no need to strike. As Soon as the tench move over the feed, you get a few liners, a few bleeps when they start attacking the feeder. And then as soon as they find the hook bait, which I like to bury in the feeder itself, they write themselves up and absolutely scream off and the reels are spinning. Fish. Well, they've taken a while to turn up this morning, but they've turned up eventually. A few liners to start off with just to show they're about, and then the right hand rod's absolutely ripped off. I can feel it shaking its head down there, typical of a tench. Oh, the other rod's off. When they turn up, they turn up in numbers. That ain't going to go nowhere, it's open water. I'll net this one quickly. That's what they call a double whammy. When the shell turns up, you might have to wait an hour, you might have to wait two hours, but you've just got to be patient. Let them move on to the baited area, like I said, spread the bait out, get the shell into the feeding zone. And just as I've seen, two rods just ripped off straight away. Those rods have literally only just been recast. They've been out there a little while, so I rebaited, recast. The fish must have been there and they've homed straight on into the sound of the feeder, hitting the surface. And within a few short minutes, bang, they're both rattled off. Look at that for a sight in clear water. can't get better than that. This is the first fish of the morning, a nice colourful male. I've got a bigger one in the other landing net so we'll put this one straight back 
and we'll get the other one weighed and photographed. Well, that one went off quick. Let's go and have a look at the other one. Well, that was absolute carnage. Double take, second fish of the day. This is the biggest one I've had from this particular venue. Just shows you the quality of the fishing you can actually have on these little underfish waters just off the town centres. Absolute beauty that is. And that's why you get up early to go tench fishing. Off you go. Let's see if we can get some more. Staying deep before it comes up over that marginal shelf, that's always a tricky point. I'm guessing the male the way it's fighting. Well, they're coming thick and fast now. They've definitely moved onto the feed. It's important to keep the swim topped up, which is what I'm going to do now, get the spod rod working again and I'm sure the action is going to continue throughout the day. Happens time and time again when the fish drift off, put a few spawns out there, they definitely respond to the sound of the spawn going in. I know it's an old cliche but it is a dinner bell and I've had it time and time again where the fish respond immediately even when you're spotting, they'll come back and you'll get bites. So a great little edge I've been using today is a little glug of um, tiger nut liquid that I just pour onto the feeder itself or drop it into. Um, it really does seem to home the fish onto the uh, feeder rather than onto the freebies. And immediately I've had a reaction, the fish has fell for it straight away, moved in on the feed. Another one's hit the net. And they're, like I said earlier, they're coming thick and fast now. It's a great morning's tench fishing. I've really enjoyed myself, well worth the early start. Well, it's another take. This one's absolutely melted off again. It's hectic to say the least. Well, I'm actually losing count now of how many fish I'm having. And there's waterways all, all around the country like these. You just got to go and find them. There she goes. What about that? What do I like about tench? Or well, what don't I like about tench? They were the first big fish I hooked as a youngster that really pulled back. The first big fish I saw in a landing net as a young lad when I used to walk the banks regularly when I was about eight or nine years old. And there was an old gentleman fishing. I walked up to him and usually you see roach and chub and stuff like that. And one day he pulled out his keep net and there was this big bar of olive orange and bright red eyes. And I was just addicted from then. It's not just the fishing, it's the seasons you fish for them. Everything's coming alive, you know, winter's gone. Fantastic fighting fish for their size. And you can get them to up to specimen size when you see one of them in your landing net. That's a sight to behold. <laughs> 